Hi there. In this video, I'll explain how to find the half-life of a radioactive source using a graph. This question is from the National 5 specimen paper. Trees continually absorb carbon-14 when they're alive. When a tree dies, the carbon-14 contained in its wood is not replaced. Carbon-14 is radioactive and decays by beta emission. In this video, I'm only answering part A of the question. Following the tree's death, the activity of the carbon-14 within a 25 mg sample of its wood changes as shown. Question then asks, use the graph to determine the half-life of carbon-14. So, the half-life of a radioactive source, of course, is the time it takes for the activity of the source to half. It's also defined as the time taken for half of the radioactive nuclei to decay. Using the first definition, we'll determine the time for the source's activity to decrease from its initial value of 26 becquerels to half that value, 13 becquerels. So, the activity of the source is 26 becquerels at time zero. If it's okay to write on the question paper, we can then draw along from 13 becquerels until we meet the line, and then all the way down to find the time taken for the activity of the source to half. This green arrow represents the half-life of the source. You can see on the x-axis of the graph that 10 divisions takes us to 2,000 years, so each division must represent 200 years. Now we know the scale, we can work out that the half-life of the source is 5,800 years, which means we've answered the question. Now, we didn't have to find the time for the activity to half from its initial value. We could, for instance, find how long it takes for the activity to half from 22 to 11 becquerels. I'll mention why I've picked these values later. So we just follow the same method as before, from 22 becquerels, we draw along until we meet the line, then down to the x-axis, then the same for 11 becquerels. The green arrow again represents the half-life of the source, and we know that each division of the x-axis represents 200 years. This time, we find the half-life of the source to be 6,000 years. It's okay that we found a different answer from before. But, we have to be careful that we note how we found the half-life. You should really write something like this in your answer. Remember the first time we found the half-life to be 5,800 years, when we halved the initial activity of 26 to 13. We should state the values of activity we're using. The second time, we found the time for the activity to half from 22 to 11. So, if we're using those values instead, we should state them. I mentioned earlier that I picked activities of 22 and 11 for a reason, although the easier method of finding half-life was to just half the initial activity in this question. You'll see that using the method we've learned, it's easier to use some values of activity than others because when you draw along to the point where you meet the line, this occurs at a point where the X and Y grid lines cross as happens in the case of 22 becquerels and 11 becquerels, which is half that value. That's us finished this lesson. Thanks for listening. You can get more help with your physics by visiting my website at physics-podcast.co.uk. Subscribing to my YouTube channel, Mr Smith's Physics Online, will also keep you updated whenever a new video is released.